Now, I've got to say, as two gentlemen, we are incredibly proud to report on a project like no other in South Africa. In fact, I think probably on the African continent. We are talking about the sanitary pad vending machine that is being launched today at a school in observatory here in Cape Town. This is the combined work of Pilani Zama, the founding executive director of O Graceland, as well as Marius Besson, who's the co-founder and director of the Menstruation Foundation. Gentlemen, welcome to it. Thank you Morning, so much for, for joining us, it's man. Good to be here. It really is good this to This is have you. a good day. This is it such is, great yeah. news, and it's a big and a very necessary and important launch. But uh, the two of you gents are at the forefront, I suppose, in this instance of women's issues. Why was it so important for you guys to get involved in such an incredible cause? I mean, you're calling it the Sanitary Pads More Accessible to Girls initiative. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so um, 2019, um, my daughter was um, turning eight and I felt like I had to give back to the, to the women's sector. And I phoned an old friend of mine, Siv Ngezi, and five seconds into the conversation, Siv says, no, let's start the Menstruation Foundation. Yeah. We were fortunate enough to be contacted by Filani Zama from a Graceland with a, with a big donation. And yeah, the rest is history. We just started uh, from there and, and have grown so much, especially during COVID, um, giving a lot of for, for women in need. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've, I've followed, Siv and I are good mates, and I've followed what you guys have been doing in that space. And I love the, the quote that he said, if, if men had to bleed every month, sanitary pads would be free. Yeah. Um, is that the, the end goal here? What's the idea, the motivation behind the vending machine? So the concept is really just to kill uh, uh, period poverty. That, that's the main goal. Um, I, I, I think we, we, we tend to say that um, women should have um, sanitary pads for free just in schools, but no. Yeah. In a totality, if condoms are free, why aren't pads free? Yeah. And so I think between Morris and I, we, we, we looked at this, this and we, we had to say, what, what module can be sustainable? Because uh, you know you donate one month, what happens the following month? You know, and and I, th I think well, the yeah. end goal is to make sure that um, every single month, young girls, young women, um, and just women in South Africa, whether you can afford it or not, it should be free. Mm. So yeah. tell us about this vending machine. So the two of you guys have partnered to launch this vending machine. How did you guys get into that conversation, and exactly how is it going to work? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, uh, Siv uh, Ngezi actually um, started looking at it a couple of years ago already. And then through our, um, you know, giving away a lot over the last six months, especially, we realized that two things, you know, sustainability is key, but also unfortunately the system is very corrupt. A lot of MPOs do, do, do donate to schools and education centers, community centers, but you know, we go back and uh, the girls never received it or the ladies never received it. So we had to come up with a, with a system that is obviously safe, secure, and give them access and about nine months of, of hard planning and prototypes and getting it all ready because obviously at a lot of schools um, you know they don't have electricity so we had to create a, a machine that doesn't need electricity that's robust but also easy to um, access and we created this vending machine with a token system so the girls get um, a token signed up and whenever she she needs um, it for a period she just pops it in there and pulls the lever and she's got her access for that month. And yes, it's, it's, it's a 12 month cycle. I love yeah. it, yeah. I love so, it. So surely the, the end goal here is to get it in every school. That's no, definitely. <laughs> and, and community centers and sports hubs as well. Because yeah. remember, um, I mean, we're working, we've got great ambassadors, um, you know, uh, the likes of Babalo Alaja, who's now uh, the Springbok captain. And, and, you know, one of the things interacting with um, the Snalos, who's captain of uh, the, the Protea team as well, um, one of the interactions is that, um, you know, women don't come to, to, to practice, you know, and, and, and part of that is to put it into um, centers where, where, where it's communities and um, uh, sports hubs as well. So yeah. it, the end goal is literally to be everywhere and everywhere with these and, and have the access. Well, I love the fact that you're starting in a school because the fact that young girls are not getting an education because yeah. of something that seems Definitely. so rudimentary. It should be happening. You know, it should not be happening. Definitely. Uh, you're launching at a school. Uh, yeah. Rightfully so, an yeah. observatory today. It's yeah. called the School of Hope. Yes. Why the school specifically? So there's actually two parts of it. So uh, we work about with 56 schools currently actively in the Western Cape, over 50,000 um, um, ladies. Mm. Um, and so we obviously go out for, for corporates and funders for, for these uh, machines, and then we give them the list and they actually choose. And um, our first sponsor then chose School of Hope, which actually... <laughs> yes, I mean, which... which 
which was for me a gift because we we've partnered with. That's with, providence, man. Yeah, yeah no, it's providence. I mean, yeah. we've partnered with School of Hope for the longest time. I, I mean, our, our young ladies at Old Graceland go to School of Hope, yeah. and I think when when the corporate chose that school, I was just like a no-brainer. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful uh, match in in that sense. It's funny how life works out like that. Definitely. When, when the intentions are right, but it also means you're tapping into a bigger movement now. Yeah. You talk about mm -hmm. Old Graceland. What do you guys do? What's at the heart of your work? So Old Graceland um, stands in the gap for, for uh, specifically young women transitioning out of care. So um, when, when youth get to the age of 18, they have to leave children's homes or, or um, uh, foster care. But the problem is, where do you go to? I mean, you're an orphan. Um, you know, government gets to a point where they say, well, you, you know, you're an adult now. You're an adult yeah, now so. <laughs> but I mean, where do you go to? And so I then started um, or I founded Old Graceland with the intention to be in that space and that gap to be like, you know, we, we, we can get you to independence. So our main goal is to get young women to independence and uh, so they, they have a safe space to live and they, they get to thrive. And I think also the combination of Menstruation Foundation um, We've, we've literally created a holistic um, independence program for them to be independent. Mm. Yeah. And, and a model that can be very easily yeah. duplicated with money. No, with definitely. Money. People getting with involved. money. Definitely. <laughs> Just, uh, I, mean, it, I mean, in four years, we've, um, eight young women have become independent I through, love it. through yeah. Graceland. It's yeah. beautiful. And you imagine that, that knock-on effect. Yeah. Yeah. Can grow. Guys, your work is inspiring. It is so, so necessary. And we need everybody rallying behind this narrative and this intention. And of course, uh, this landmark project is going to see more vending machines produced and rolled out to needing schools and communities. And uh, here's to more good work and corporates really getting Come involved. Come on, Get guys. On Thank you, Marius. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so Good much. Appreciate it. Thank you.